Hello, good morning, good morning everyone. Uh, look at my beautiful view, guys. I am heading to Tagbalaran today solo. Um, heading, heading out, heading down to the city. I have to go to the dermatologist today. So it's a pretty ride, I'm taking my time. I had to stop at the LBC and drop off a package that I didn't like. Um, I ordered this weed whacker online. I should have just bought it in the store. I mean, but I was in quarantine and I was so bored. <laughs> and uh, so I spent my nights buying stuff online. Anyways, long story short. Um, I, before I left, before I left the US, um, I, I had, um, you know, I made all my doctor's appointments and all my checkups and everything, everything went pretty well, um, except for my dermatologist. I went to the dermatologist and um, he saw a, a very dark mole on my lower back and he took it out, you know, he took it out and, and he, you know, set it up with pathology and that was the week before I was leaving and so I was cutting everything close but that's all they had for appointments, I had, I had no choice. Um, so, um, when, when he got the pathology report back, he wanted, you know, the cells came back a little bit more funkier than they should be. Um, so it's like, it, I think they grade it like, you know, like moderate to severe. And, and so this, this particular mole came back, uh, graded as severe. <clears throat> and, um, it's not the first mole I've had removed off my back. Um, they're called dysplastic nevi. That's what they're called. And so, like, what they do is when they see one of those things, they just remove it, um, just for precautions. It's not cancer, but um, these type of moles can can turn into cancer. Um, not not often. It's not it's not often that they do. But they can. So, um, but, um, the Friday that I'm leaving, the doctor calls me and says he wants me to make an appointment to come back in because he wants to take more of it out, go over the margins. Um, and go a little deeper, um, and I and, and I couldn't call me on Friday. I'm leaving, so he said that if, if you know to keep checking on the scar, and if the mole grows back inside the scar, I have to go you know and get it removed. So lo and behold, um, a couple days ago, I, 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 every at least once a week I can have him then check check the check the scar, and there was nothing in there when I first got here, and then the other day she checked it and the, the mole was growing back inside the scar. I made an appointment with Dr. Joyce Castillo. Um, she's at Ace Hospital, and um, I, I really like her. She's really good. Um, the only thing I don't like is I do things in the Philippines. It's very, you know, she wanted to see the pathology report before she took it out, but so I had to call uh, my doctor in the U.S. and he emailed me the pathology report, and it doesn't say anything that's going to really help her. I mean, she just has to, you know, cut it out, go over the margins as, as big as possible and as deep as possible to get to get all the cells out. Um, but she didn't want to. So my first appointment, I went to see her, and she didn't want to do anything until she got the pathology report. But I mean, I read the report; it's not going to do anything. So it's just an extra appointment. Um, so I got to go see her. She's going to take this thingy, thingy majiggy off my back. And um, I'm sure that she'll send it off to pathology like they always do. And then we'll see if I have to go back again. I don't know. Um, but I'm not, I'm not too worried about it. I've, I've had these before. Um, in any case, um, you gotta do these checkups. That's why, that's why I do these checkups. You know, I spent, I'm 51 years old and I spent on my entire life under the sun, really. I mean, I'm a die-hard fisherman. I'm always out there. Uh, when I was younger, I was a, a lifeguard. Um, I don't spend as much time under the sun as I used to. But I, I do have really dark skin, but I guess, you know, it doesn't really matter. The doctors aren't too concerned, but you do have to keep an eye on these things. Um, the, other, the other issue of the day is our generator. <clears throat> so, our generator has an automatic transfer switch. So what that means is um, when the power goes out, the generator kicks on automatically. 
And then when the power comes back on, the generator shuts off automatically. And so for whatever reason, <clears throat> so for whatever, whatever reason, um, I don't think the last time we had a we had a blackout. I don't the generator think, shut off, and so it was getting more power. And for whatever reason, the battery blew out. Like the battery battery blew up. Uh, and I think it's because the transfer switch is, is malfunctioning. I'm not sure. So, um, so what I have to do right now is. So what? So what? Happened? It's the Coast Guard. It's a nice, nice Toyota Helix for the Coast Guard. Check that out. They had their lights on. I wasn't gonna pull. Right? I have no idea. They don't have any siren. I gotta get a new battery for the generator. So now I got. I'm on. After my doctor's appointment, I'm on, I'm on the lookout for a. I guess they said it was seven plates. NSD40 battery. I don't know. I have no idea what that means. You're looking at a very non-technical type of guy. <laughs> you know, some guys love these, love to tinker. You know, they love to. You know, um, you know, they know all about these things. Not me. No way. I don't tinker. I'm not a tinkerer. <laughs> don't call me a tinkerer, because I'm not. <laughs> uh, I really, I really don't like tinkering around with, with things at the, at the house. I'd rather have someone else do the tinkering. <laughs> I've never been, I've never been good with that stuff. I just doesn't interest me. Like I don't really care to know anything about batteries, car batteries, generator batteries. <clears throat> um, but I'm gonna start at I think City Hardware. I doubt they'll have it. I never seen batteries there, but you never know. Um, I'm assuming maybe it's going to be at like uh, a car supply store. Um, maybe I'll try. Maybe my first stop, I'll try the Goodyear place. Uh, they usually have everything there, uh, except tires. <laughs> they went there. It's like the biggest car you know, repair shop in Tagbalaran. And it's an, it's a huge, it's, an, it's a huge um, Goodyear shop, I guess. They sell everything there. I bought my, um, I bought my jackhammer there. So they sell everything there, except they don't have my tires for my car. <laughs> oh, geez. And so we were gonna buy, I need new tires for the truck. We were gonna buy them at um, the Toyota. And they want 15,000 pesos for a tire. I said, no way. And I, I looked at this tire up online, you can price them, and it's a 6,000 peso, and that's what I had in my mind, 7,000 pesos. It, it's a 6,000 peso tire each. But the problem is, I can't find it anywhere. And so they were gonna order it, but I don't know where the hell they're ordering it from. I looked at the Dunlop site, and even the Dunlop site don't have this tire. So I don't, I don't really know where to, I mean, it's a Dunlop tire. Um, and the roads here are awful. I don't want to put a crappy tire on. I mean, I don't think Dunlop is the greatest, but it's not a bad tire. I mean, I prefer a Goodyear or a Michelin um, or a Yokohama, but they don't, they don't, I can't even find the, I can't find the size. It's a 70, it's a 225-70RC, whatever they call that, 70, it's a 70. And so the, the the only one I could find was a 65, and it's a smaller tire. I don't want I don't want to put smaller tires uh, on this truck, especially when I go up the mountains. So mm, that's it. I'm on my way to um, Ace Hospital. I'm solo today. Lynn's staying home. Ah, she don't need to come. She came with me last time. Um, you know, she 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 burns out really easily. You know, take her to Tag Balaran, and the time we get home, she's in such a bad mood. You know, so it's better I just go by myself. I don't mind the drive, you know. It's you know, you get all your thoughts, all your thinking done when you're driving, <clears throat> and um, it's a pretty drive. Uh, 
I don't I don't mind at all. You just you just have to go slow. I mean not too slow, but you gotta take it easy because if you try to push it and you go fast, you, you, that's when you get tired because you have to really um, focus uh, like a laser beam on the on the on the road and the cars and the bikes. So I just go at a moderate speed where you can relax your mind a little bit, and then it's a little bit more enjoyable ride as as opposed to push pushing the pedal to the metal. I do. I did stop at LBC to, to return some to return that weed whacker, and that took a lot longer than I thought. So I might be a little late. But I just hope I'm not too late because then I'll be waiting all day in that hospital, which I don't want to do. I want to get in. I want to get out. It's one of the few doctors in the Philippines that you can actually make an appointment. Uh, most of them, most of them, you can't make appointments. You don't. You have to go. You got to write your name on the list. And you, you're like, you know, the 30th person on the list. And you get there at 9 o'clock. And then the doctor doesn't see you till 4 o'clock in the afternoon. That's that's, that's the Philippines. Um, but this is Ace Hospital. Hopefully they're, they're, they seem to be a little bit more modernized. Um, the doctor has a really nice office. Uh, I was very impressed with her. Um, as a person, as a doctor, I liked her office. Um, yeah, so that's it. I'm gonna um, peace out right now.